Hello and welcome to another edition of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and I was asked a lot to do some tutorials on Marquee, so today I'm gonna do one. Even though it might not be something that you immediately associate with, uh, with doing in Marquee. And this is something that I had to do for a project um, a couple of weeks ago. And it's uh, kind of like a YouTube-like uh, progress play bar. And this is done entirely in uh, Avid's marquee. And the cool thing about this play bar is that you can change uh, the length in your timeline by just trimming it. And it will still play from the beginning to the end and it will just play slower. So uh, let's see how we're going to do this uh, with Marquee. So let's just delete this quickly. And first of all, make sure that in your Marquee settings, you have your Marquee title settings uh, set to Marquee or Ask Me. Otherwise, when we open the title tool, it will open the old title tool and you will wonder, how the hell am I going to get into a Marquee? All right, now we're going to open Marquee by going to Tools title tool, I'll say open marquee, and there, there, it opens marquee. Now I have opened it on a frame that is kind of with a lot of black, so I'll just change the frame, go back to marquee, it updates the background automatically. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, create the background that is not animated. We'll uh, enable the save title grid by going to view and enabling it and now we know we have to have our you know important stuff within that inner frame so the first thing we're going to do is draw the rectangle that is uh, the background just go to the rectangle tool or press m and then just draw a rectangle and it will draw a white rectangle by default and uh, if you remember, this whole thing had a kind of fake 3D look that is done by gradients. So let's enable uh, the gradients in the quick titles properties that are usually in the upper left. So let's hit enable gradient. Well, this is not really the gradient yet that we're looking for. We're looking for a top to bottom gradient, not for a left to right gradient. So let's change the gradient here from top to bottom. Hmm, this is uh, exactly the wrong way around. So let's click again. And it's uh, quite all right the way it is. Maybe a bit uh, strong of a gradient. So let's uh, just say we don't want to have the gradient start at black, but at a kind of dark gray. So let's double click on the first little arrow here and it opens the color picker and you can increase the brightness a bit unfortunately it doesn't live update which is too bad so let's just go for whatever something and just hit ok and that is pretty much all right the now the, the last thing that we need to do is turn down the opacity so let's just turn down the opacity by clicking and dragging up or down. We can just change the opacity of this thing on the fly. So let's just turn down the opacity and there we go. We don't want to make this too strong because, you know, you actually want to see the background, don't you? So that's the, the, that's the rectangle. Next thing we're going to do is create the, the little play button that was on the left here. And we do this by... Uh, using the ellipse tool and just as you used to from Photoshop or stuff like that if you hold down the shift key it will draw a straight circle so let's hold down the shift key and draw a circle and get back into our uh, you know move tool what is it called here the edit tool and it's snapping here so I'll use the arrow keys to position my play button. I might also want to make this larger or smaller. And as you can see here now, I've changed the aspect ratio, which I didn't want. 
So again, hold down the shift key when changing the height. And as you can see, it has retained the gradient settings that, that we had before, which is nice because we want this whole thing to have uh, like a small, small gradient. But we want the color, of course, of course, to be different. And because we all like YouTube and YouTube has kind of this uh, reddish, dark reddish color, we'll change the color to uh, this dark red. And now you can see this is kind of a weird gray. And that is because it has also retained the opacity. So let's turn this up to 100%. The next thing we want is the little play uh, logo here. And because it's kind of difficult to draw a triangle, what I did is I used the character palette or character viewer it is called uh, on the Mac. And there's of course the character palette in, on Windows, which does basically the same thing. We can uh, check out a couple of different uh, characters. Now I haven't found <laughs> a... Um, triangle that is pointing uh, right, which is weird. And it's probably there, but I was just too stupid to find it. And uh, what you'll need to do is uh, copy this into your clipboard, uh, which is easy on Windows. Uh, here, uh, I was only able to insert this uh, character into my text editor and then uh, highlight it and then copy it to the clipboard. So now it's in my clipboard and we can close the character palette. As this is a character, we are using the text tool to just insert that character, just paste it in there. We'll make it a little smaller. This is pretty, pretty huge. Oh, um, we'd either have to mark this whole thing or get back into our edit mode and then turn down the size. And now what we're going to do is rotate this thing. So let's just zoom in here a bit. Let's uh, choose the rotate tool now. And now you can see it looks like a little sphere with pointers or, you know, like, like circles that let you rotate uh, this thing. And it's pretty nice. Uh, and if you hold down the shift key again while rotating, it will snap to, um, to a couple of points. So it's pretty easy to rotate it by like 90 degrees. So let's get back to our edit tool. And just, well, I'll just zoom out again. I'm going to zoom to fit here. And now I will just position my character so that it is centered. And again, we want to enable the, the little gradient here. Oh, and <laughs> because I've uh, now uh, uh, rotated the thing, I now <laughs> need to use the left to right gradient to to make it an up and down gradient, which is kind of weird. But if, if you know, you know, it, it makes sense if you think about it. And uh, again, this is a pretty strong gradient. So let's just make this very, very light. And I will also add a drop shadow that is uh, very close to the actual character. And increase the softness by a bit just to make it a little more 3D-ish. So the last thing we need for the background, and with the background, I mean everything that doesn't animate, is the gray bar that shows uh, the length of the video, but not the progress. And for this again, we need uh, the rectangle tool and just draw a small rectangle. Maybe something like this. Uh, go back to the edit tool and make sure this this is rightly centered. And this is supposed to be a gray thingy. So let's make this gray. And again, I want to make this a bit 3D ish. So I'll enable the gradient. And make this look a bit 
more 3D-ish. So this is our background and this is everything that will not change. Now what I will do is not animate this uh, progress bar in marquee. You could do it and it would be pretty simple but you'd have a fixed length animation that will play at the same speed and you know you would have to reanimate and change the duration uh, whenever you need a different length. And that we don't want. We want the flexibility of changing the play bar length, uh, you know, just the way we want to. And that's why we're going to animate within Media Composer and not within Marquee. So that's why I have taken the background that is everything that does not animate. And we'll just save this to a bin in Avid. So let's go to file, save to bin, or press uh, command B. So let's just call this play by background two. And it will save it to a bin. And we'll say, yeah, yeah, do this. And there it is, our nice little background is already here in our source monitor. All right, that is it for this episode of the Avid Screencast. Thank you very much for watching. If you like, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast at avidscreencast.com. We can also watch past episodes. If you have any comments or suggestions like show topics, just go ahead and email me at mail at avidscreencast.com or just comment on the website or contact me on Twitter, twitter.com slash avidscreencast or on Facebook, facebook.com slash avidscreencast. And if you'd like to know what kinds of things I do in my day job, check out editguy.de. Once again, thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.